Walt Bennick is a longtime volunteer at the Winona County Historical Society, and on most days you'll find him in the building's basement manning the archives area. But on Wednesday, he was giving a talk on Winona's most famous landmark, Sugarloaf, as part of the Historical Society's Food for Thought program. Several times each month, the noontime program offers historical learning opportunities. Sometimes it's a film or a book discussion, but today it was a lecture presented by Benick. He began his research as a presentation for the Winona chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution. It probably took me about six months to pull it together. As I said, I did it for the Daughters of the American Revolution and uh, gave them a presentation on it in November at Sugarloaf Assisted Living. And, uh, it kind of out of this grew the exhibit downstairs and of course this talk and uh, I think a lot more information about Sugarloaf. The research process was interesting to Bennick. Something that struck him was the public outcry against quarrying Sugarloaf. You hear a lot about you know uh, later on about the Daughters of the American Revolution stopping that and that but but uh, just the quarrying of it was a real problem I think at the time you know and uh, that was the biggest thing I just learned about. Bennick's research uncovered some interesting information about Winona's longtime landmark. There was a time when its very existence was threatened. There were also some interesting ideas brought forth on how to best utilize the rock. It was sold by Margaret O'Day, uh, John O'Day's uh, only surviving relative, his, his, his only daughter, to, John, uh, to Roy Bone. 30 acres of land, and he's going to plot it out and sell it for home lots. He's thinking about maybe uh, selling it to top to a tobacco company to put electric display advertising on top of it. It'd certainly be hard to imagine a site like that. Eventually, Bennick said Sugarloaf was purchased by the Winona chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution and then given over to the city of Winona. The purchase price? $2,000. The Daughters of the American Revolution will not possess the land but are seeking a way to fund, get funds, then well, so the city can then <coughs> buy the property. So there's a campaign starting in October 15, 1948. Sugarloaf became the property of the city of Winona, whereas the, the DNR, DAR then transferred money from their, their account to the city to Robert Light to pay for the, the Sugarloaf for the city. By the end of the hour, the 90 or so in attendance had a much greater understanding of the history behind Winona's famous rock. Historical Society Assistant Director Jennifer Weaver said that's what the Food for Thought program is all about. The idea is to get people um, to learn something on, on their lunch break. So we have a lot of retired folks that come, but every once in a while um, somebody can sneak away for an hour over their lunch break. People are welcome to bring their lunch along with and eat while they listen to the programs. And uh, They vary between uh, lectures um, on various topics. Uh, like Sugarloaf, um, to people's travels um, that they've done, um, really kind of a wide range of topics. Bennick's research has inspired the latest exhibit at the museum, From Wapashaw's Cap to Sugarloaf, the story of Winona's Landmark. It's now on display in the museum's lobby. The next Food for Thought program is coming up on February 19th. It will be a presentation by author Joel Arnold on his book, Oxcart Angel. You can find more details at winonahistory.org.